All right, guys, we are now at the fifth stop, and that's the registry room. What did they do at the registry room? Let's find out. The registry room was nicknamed the Great Hall because it's so big. The large rectangular room is 200 feet long and 102 feet wide. Many immigrants had never seen such a large indoor space. The waiting area in the Great Hall had long metal rails that helped maintain an orderly line as people went through the medical and legal inspections. Wooden benches, benches were added in 1903. The noise in this room could be intense. The sounds of thousands of voices bounced off the vaulted ceilings. And imagine all those voices were different languages, you know. Officials in the Great Hall decided whether each person could enter the country right away or whether that person's case required further review. From 1903 to 1914, immigrants were checked for trachoma, a contagious eye disease. Doctors used a tool called a button hook to lift a person's eyelid to look for the disease. The button hook was a well-known and feared part of the immigration process. People with trachoma were often sent back to their home countries. Oh my, can you imagine? So remember, take a look at these firsthand primary sources, these audio and photos, right? You want to do the oral, the oral history is amazing. All right, that's stop five, the registry room. Your stop six. Ready? The doctors, and this is the medical exam. The doctors at Ellis Island developed a system to identify immigrants who needed medical attention. The first test was a six-second physical. A uniformed doctor looked for any signs of illness or contagious diseases. The doctor noted whether the immigrants limped or went short of breath, if their eyes were red, if they acted disturbed or seemed otherwise abnormal. If someone was considered a risk to the public health, his or her clothes were marked by a piece of chalk with an identifying letter. An X denoted insanity. A P denoted pulmonary or lung problems. Immigrants who were marked were taken out of the line and kept for further examination. Immigrants who passed the six-second exam continued through the maze of metal rails toward the far end of the hall for a legal inspection. Right? So again... Take, take a look at these primary sources, these photos, and listen to the audio, right, for the medical exam. And we're going to go move right on to step – well, no, we're not. That We did five and six. So we did the medical exam, and, you know, let's keep going on to seven. The legal inspection. All right. So each arriving steamship's crew gave – officials at Ellis Island a list of names of the passengers on board. The manifest, as the list was called, had the name and description of each passenger. One by one, the passengers were called forward to speak with a uniform inspector seated on a tall stool behind a high desk. Interpreters helped the immigrants communicate. 29 questions were asked of every immigrant. They included, where were you born? Are you married? What is your occupation? Have you ever been convicted of a crime? How much money do you have? What is your destination? An immigrant could be detained for further inquiry if his or her answers differed from the answers listed on the manifest, right? So it seems like there was a lot of reasons that you could be detained and sent back home. It was probably very nerve wracking. So again, take a look at these great primary sources. Take a look at the audio when, when you're on the website. Okay, and moving right along, step eight. We just passed the legal in inspections. Now we're detained. Oh, my goodness. For most people, Ellis Island was the Isle of Hope. But for the unfortunate few who failed the health or legal inspections, it was the Isle of Tears. Legal detainees lived in a dormitory, dormitory room on the third floor. They might wait a few days or even a month. Then their case would be reviewed in the hearing room. People who were detained for medical reasons were cared for at the island hospital or kept in quarantine. Some were treated for weeks or even months. Eventually, a board of special inquiry would review an individual's medical report and decide whether to allow him, in, him or her into the United States. 
or send them back. Oh my, check out these extra links and look at the primary sources on this, okay? Here's one of the dormitories right there. Oh my goodness. All right, we're on step nine. The stairs of separation. All right, take a look. After the medical and legal inspections, the immigrants arrived at the top of another staircase at the other end of the Great Hall. This staircase had three aisles. Immigrants who were being detained were often brought down the center aisle. People who were traveling west or south walked down the right side of the staircase. And those going to New York City or to the north walked down the left side. At the bottom of the stairs was a post office, a ticketing office for the railways, and social workers to help the immigrants who needed assistance. There was also an office to exchange money from their home country for U.S. dollars. No matter where they were going after Ellis Island, immigrants needed money. Exchange rates for currencies around the world were posted each day on a blackboard. Wow. Okay, you can buy your train tickets. There it is. Check out the primary sources and uh, with this audio, primary sources with this photos, with these photos, right? Really good stuff. I want you to take a look at all that. All right, finally, we're at the 10th stop. The kissing post. Ew. An area on the first floor of the building became known as the kissing post. It got its nickname because it was where family members and friends waited for their loved ones. After months or years apart, they kissed and hugged and shouted with joys and joy and relief. For the immigrants, the long journey was finally over. They were in America. All right. Take a look at these photos. Take a look at the audio, right? Take a look at these, the letters, right? And newspaper articles talk, that they talk about, okay? All right. We're all done. So we are back to the beginning. So there you have it.